Hello, everybody. Green Effect Podcast live on the air, season four, episode 17. All right, I'm back to the solo gig this week. Uh, I've had some amazing guests on lately, and uh, I've been actually getting some emails and text messages for people looking for, hey, man, what about all the other cool stuff that you talk about, right, around the market and life in general and all the other crap that goes on? And uh, we've just had these incredible guests. So you know what? Back to solo this week. Obviously, a lot to talk about, and we're going to dive right into it. So... Uh, first of all, I will say the guests we've had, the guests we've had on lately, man, make sure you go and listen to those episodes. They have been some really cool uh, folks with incredible stories and talking about their businesses. We had Tom Hall from Blue Mortgage. Uh, listen, if you're a tech person and you want to nerd out a little bit, man, we talk tech, CRMs, uh, building businesses around technology, stuff like that. Uh, Renee Mass was on investors, uh, student rentals, uh, all sorts of cool stuff. And then Lacey Morrison from Broker Social Club. Uh, she is uh, the lady that uh, helped with my social media. So if you are enjoying TikTok or, or my Instagram, she's the one you got to give some credit to. Uh, but uh, that podcast was hilarious. So we had a, just a blast. So we went from uh, a techie um very uh it wasn't serious but you know it was great information to renee mass very very soft-spoken incredible information to an out of control uh chat with Lacey. all sorts of different feels the last three three weeks of the three episodes anyway like i said back to solo got a lot of stuff to talk about man where do i even start what would be (laughs) what would be a real estate agent or a mortgage broker's anything video chat text or whatever without talking about the bank of canada so let me just get this shit out of the way and then you know we'll talk about it briefly it's been done to death all right it's funny i saw one tiktok video from a real estate agent and he's like if i hear one more video or anything about the bank of canada this was like thursday the day after the announcement if i hear one more thing He's like, I'm going to lose my mind. It was insane. I remember about an hour after the announcement, I'm scrolling on my social media. And I swear, other than the ads for like, you know, men's bathing products and whatever, all I could see, as far as the eye could see, was Bank of Canada announcement everything. It was just out of control. Right. So it's funny. I I tried to do one post. I think I did one video and I just stopped. And then I switched topics because it just it just got old really quick. Other than the one that I just posted. So as you guys know, I record this on a Sunday night and then I release on Tuesday. Uh so I did a TikTok uh and Instagram yesterday on June eighth with Christia Freeland, my my favorite affectionately known as Disney Plus lady our Minister of Finance, and Deputy Prime Minister. Please don't ever let her run the country. But anyway, um, she basically took credit for the Bank of Canada rate drop. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So in my comments on the text for the post, I actually put in there, um, it's kind of like that kid at school that, you know, when you did group work, like as a grade seven, eight or whatever, and there's like three of you to a group and the one kid that did nothing just sat there and like picked his nose or we didn't have phones back then. So that's what you did. You picked your nose <laughs> or ate glue or whatever. Uh, that kid. And then he took full credit. He or she took full credit. Right. That's what this is like. Disney plus lady. Because nobody really knows her as Christia Freeland on my stuff. Disney plus lady was the kid in the corner picking her nose. And then she took full credit for everything that happened. For real? Like, seriously. Gotta be kidding me. <laughs> like, I said it before, like, weeks ago. If she keeps taking credit for stuff she did nothing to contribute to, wow. <laughs> like, I'm gonna lose it like that realtor did, seeing all the uh, Bank of Canada stuff. So anyway, moving on. Bank of Canada, they dropped rates. All right, so listen, guys, 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 guys. So, uh, quarter percent. You know, it doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. 
uh, just from a numbers perspective. So let's just, now we've had some time to sober up after all the parties we had because it dropped and, you know, now reality has set in where, listen, a quarter percent, I didn't even post this on my social media because I, it's like, it wasn't enough to, to really warrant the info, I guess, but a, a 0.25% on a hundred thousand dollars equals 16 bucks in interest. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but if we're talking 500,000, please hold, that's $75 a month. Okay. Not a lot. Now you got bigger mortgages, you got more HELOCs, investors that have used HELOCs to purchase properties. They're doing cartwheels because whatever they can save, they can save. Hey, it all counts, right? Especially when you're talking about razor thin cash flow on rentals, every little penny counts. It's all good. Um, now, is this going to set the, the, the rental market? Sorry, is this going to set the housing market on fire? Not from a more people will get approved perspective, but I think from a consumer confidence perspective, not light it on fire, but give it a really solid kick in the ass, right? Because I think like Tiffy Boy, if we see hope, I always say, I've said this for years, the Canadian consumer, the economy, people who buy houses in Canada, we love hope. Just show me some hope. If there's hope rates are coming down, you know what, maybe I will pick up, we'll pick up the call or the phone, call Stephen, call my mortgage worker, whatever, and just see, hey, what can I afford now? What could I not afford from before? Whatever. Okay. So this is the sort of thing where, um, yeah, this could definitely help spur the market. Are people now going to be able to afford hundreds of thousands more? Absolutely not. I just posted a video this morning. So on Sunday on social media, Instagram, TikTok, and even LinkedIn for the LinkedIn folks, where I even said this past week, my aha moment was this. Make sure you're getting the right information. Try to sort out all the crap that's going on out there and really get the right information for about mortgages. And I'm going to sneeze any second though. So when I do sneeze, it's going to be loud. Get ready to turn your volume down. Anyway, um, make sure you're getting the right information from the right spots. Okay. Because I, I said this to a room of realtors on Wednesday, right after the announcement. And I really try to impress this upon them. Be careful being too salesy with this, right? If you're get up, getting up there dancing on social media, now's the time to buy. Well, it might not be the time to buy. And I've said this before. Like, this is like, we started the episode with me being a parrot, okay? When it's the right time to buy, buy. Don't worry about the rates, the price, the whatever. If you are emotionally and financially ready, buy a house, right? I got clients have been waiting for a long time, can't buy a house, okay? I told these realtors, I said, guys, be careful how salesy you get, right? Provide advice, provide vision, provide information, and then the people will follow because there's a bunch of mortgage brokers, mortgage agents, real estate agents that are going to be very salesy about this, and they're not going to get any traction. So, you know, again, is this going to set the world on fire? No, I really don't think it is, only from a consumer confidence perspective. Now, we get another rate drop. Now numbers start to get a little more significant. I would say, in my opinion, 1%. I think once it gets down to a full 100 basis point reduction, that's when it goes from consumer confidence to actually executing on the increase or the acceleration of the housing market. Not yet, though. Right now, I think it's relief. Okay, It's relief that, holy cow, rates could actually start to come down. I posted this on, on Wednesday, I think, actually, in the end of, end of Bank of Canada. I called it Bank of Canada Day. People were calling me, happy Bank of Canada Day, <laughs> all right? But at the end, I'm like, guys, he gave us a quarter percent. Don't go blow your brains out spending money and taking the big vacation because you're saving 15 bucks a month. Don't do that. Be smart. You don't need the most expensive car. Get the right car, okay? Be smart about this. Have we not learned our lesson, okay? Take this, save the money. And then hopefully, remember, and Tiffy Boy did say this. He says, look, when he was talking about further rate cuts, so we could see that. But he goes, it depends on the data. So if all of a sudden inflation goes up because we're all spending like crazy people, 
or you know a- other factors come through, he might have to pause again or jack up the rate. Can you imagine if he went back to 5%, right? That would be like getting in trouble from mom and dad because you didn't listen to what they told you to do, right? Now, I will say to go this direction, listen, Tiffy Boy is struggling. And for those, again, if you're a new listener, Tiffy Boy is Tiff Macklin, the Bank of Canada governor. We call him Tiffy Boy, all right, on all my social media and on this podcast. But Tiffy Boy, let's just not forget this. Tiffy Boy is, is still recovering from a credibility issue. This is very important to understand. This is the same guy who got up 2020, mid 2020 during COVID, and said to all of us Canadians, hey, rates are going to be long for, or low for a long time. You have, co- I can't remember the exact wording. Give me one sec. I might actually have the exact wording. And if I don't, we'll just kind of keep on going. Um, what did he say? He said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, I don't have it. But anyway, what he basically said was in 2020, uh, oh, give me two seconds. I might have this. Uh, I don't have it. It doesn't matter. But he basically said that, um, here it is, found it. If you've got a mortgage or if you are considering making a major purchase, or you're a business and you're considering making an investment, you can be confident rates will be low for a long time. That is what he said July 2020. Guess what we all did, right? Loaded the gun and started shooting, right? Market took off, like exponentially took off. We all spent more money. Banks, again, giving out credit like it was candy because. Rates are going to be low for a long time. So he's still struggling with this credibility issue. He's got to reel this in a little bit. He also, his second mistake, a lot of talk about this this week. I know within in my circle of a center of influence. The other mistake he made was when he, his delay in raising rates. I remember January 2022, right at the height of the insanity of the housing market. And he didn't raise rates. And we're like, what the hell? And people were like, what is going on up there? Like, what possible power is controlling this guy to not raise rates? This is, the market was out of control. Debt was out of control. Inflation was just crazy. 8% and change. Like, we were going towards a place we didn't want to go. He didn't raise rates. He didn't. March 2022 was the first rate increase, and we all know what happened from there. It was the highest, um, the highest, most aggressive rate increase in Canadian history. So Bucko's made a couple of mistakes here. Uh, there, there's a great interview, uh, I believe, with National Post, sorry, with CBC. And Macklin talked about this. He's got some credibility to, uh, to rebuild, right? Great interview. If you want to get a real sense... He screwed this up. I will give him a little bit of credit. He's actually fixing his mistakes. Not a fan of the guy, again, because he got us here. In two years of missteps, he's probably created a 10 to 15 year recovery. Okay. Or, or that's how long it's going to take to recover. But he's recognized it. And we all love a good comeback story. And, and I think that's what this has now become for him. Okay. He's the voice of reason which is insane to think, but it is, right? So he has to be very strategic in what he's doing to try to bring this back to where it should be. Now, he's got one job and one job only. It is manage inflation and he's got one weapon and that's the rate, the prime, the prime overnight lending rate, okay? So there might be some, some collateral damage our Canadian dollar might become a freaking peso, okay? Watching it, he's watching it, but he has to manage inflation, okay? Um, household debt may increase. Like, there's a lot of things. There might be some collateral damage, but he's got one job. Now, it's not all him, man. It's not all him, right? We got a federal government 
who couldn't balance the budget of a lemonade stand. Okay, they they don't know what the hell. It's just that we've lost. They've lost the room, guys. I was joking about this uh, last week where they could come out with the best policies on anything. It could be the best thing we've ever seen from a government. Okay, saving whatever. Okay, people would be like, "That's not right. That's not good." We want to talk about losing credibility. Oof. That's a whole other podcast. We can talk about JT and Disney Plus Lady till we're till the cows come home. Anyway, so long story short, are we going to see a rate decrease in July? Maybe, maybe. And and one other thing I will mention because this is important. Just remember this: his decisions on the overnight rate have nothing to do directly with fixed rate mortgages. This is only variable. Okay, variable rate mortgages, HELOCs. Variable rate, uh, lines of credit, um, uh, uh, loans, stuff like that. His decisions don't impact fixed rates directly. What directly impacts fixed rates is the bond market. That's where the banks get their money for their mortgages. Okay, That thing has been up and down like a yo-yo, but it is reacting to different metrics that are out there. I put my phone on silent, so it stopped beeping. Um, so that if you really are happy, if you have a mortgage coming up for renewal or whatever, and you want to nerd out a little bit on mortgages, check the bond rates up, down, left, right. That is telling a lot of the story on the fixed rate side. This is just variable or HELOCs or variable rate loans and, and lines of credit. Okay. So uh, just Google five year government bond, 10 year government bond, three year whatever and just see what the bond rates are doing, that'll give you an indication of if fixed rates are going up or down, right? Oh my God, can we just stop talking about the Bank of Canada? Let's just go find something else to talk about. Is there not like a cute puppy we can look at it on YouTube? All right, hot off the press, moving right along. And this will all, I don't really promise this, but it will probably all connect in some way, shape or form. Because I just talked for almost 15 minutes on the damn Bank of Canada. And I really didn't want to, but I made myself do it. Uh, JT, this is not hot off the press, came out last week, but I want to talk about it because it goes to maybe what a root cause misunderstanding could be or the reality of our world right now. Okay. So JT came out, Justin Trudeau in case you're wondering, or new to the podcast, and basically said, look, yeah, we got to make housing more affordable in Canada, because I've said this too. Yeah, we got to build more homes, probably reduce immigration, stuff like that, just to right the ship, and just make houses more affordable. I've already said, I don't think we can see any significant decrease in value past what we've done already, because what JT came out and said <laughs> was, um, we can't drop the rate, or sorry, we can't drop or let houses drop in value too much because the baby boomers, who I, I affectionately say this to people, are not dying off fast enough, right? Because traditionally, there's a transfer of wealth from baby boomers, etc., down the generation line. Uh, we can't have the properties drop because they are so heavily invested in their in their real estate. And we got to go back and look at some timelines here because he's right. Will he screw it up and let it happen? Maybe. <laughs> Bucko got this right. Again, his delivery is probably all wrong, but he's right. You got to remember, RSPs were not really a thing to the 2000s. So I look at my parents, for example. Their whole thing was pay down your mortgage as fast as you can. That's all they did. They saved, obviously. They had pensions. Back then it was pensions. And they would depend on, or they would understand that when they retire, CPP, OAS, the government will take care of us. We've been paying into CPP and OAS all these years. And then my work pension. How many times did I hear my grandparents say, I just want a job with a good pension, right? That was it back then. And then pay down your mortgage as fast as you can because it was freaking 18%. So yeah, because of the way the financial times were back then, yeah. Your your property is your retirement. Absolutely. And we see that all the time where people will take, you know, their parents' free and clear homes, sell them so they can go into assisted living or a nursing home or whatever. That's what that is to pay for. 
it is what it is, guys, right? So he's right. We can't just have properties plummet because this is the retirement plan of boomers. Not because they did something wrong, but that's be it's because of the way it was leading up to this. And that's important to understand because this then opens up a whole domino effect of problems going forward where if we have, picture this, if now all of a sudden the house prices are down and they can't afford to go into private assisted living or, or uh, nursing homes or whatever, guess who's going to have to pay for that? Yeah, the government, the taxpayers, and then of course, as you know, our infrastructure, provincial, federal, sucks. So yeah, we need these houses to stay where they are because we, they need the money, right, for that sort of care. And there's always been a transfer of wealth. It's just a lot slower. We see all the time now. It never used to be like this, but we see this all the time where, you know, boomers are given money to Gen X, Gen Z, millennials, because they are living longer right? And they do want to see their kids enjoy the money while they're alive. Happens a lot more now, right? So, you know, that, and then one other little nugget of information, the CPP and OAS has not at all caught up with inflation. So now you got seniors, and we see this all the time with our reverse mortgages, right? Where they're taking reverse mortgages, because a lot of them are retiring with debt, and their CPP and OAS doesn't cover mortgages or interest on the mortgages because they're just bigger. Anyway, you can see where I'm going with this. JT's right. Again, execution and delivery is all wrong, but you know, it's, it is the reality. Guys, it is what it is. We're Canadian. We love our real estate, right? Um, I just, I look as far as my living room, right? My wife has more friggin' home shows on there than I ever care to watch ever again in my life. It is what it is. That's just part of our Canadian culture, right? Not saying it's right, but it is part of our Canadian culture, right? All right, enough of that fun. Next. Oh, this is, this is hot off the press. So employment numbers came out on Friday. Scary shit here. Not bad, but scary shit. So remember, Tiffy Boy and his band of merry men need more unemployment. That's what slows an economy down. Okay, so if we're going to see, this is so ass backwards, but it's true. If we're going to see further rate cuts, we need to see more unemployment. Because that means the economy is not ticking as fast, right? And remember, to bring a, a step back, we had some re one major point that really led to the Bank of Canada rate decrease was our GDP gross domestic, gross, gross domestic product. And that's basically um, the exact definition is, close to it is um, uh, how much is our, our country producing gross domestic product, right? How much are we importing, exporting? Again, guys, not an economist. I know someone in the comments is going to say that's not exactly the way it is, but it's basically how much is our country producing, okay? Really, if you're smarter than this and you got an economics degree, shove the exact definition in the comments, whatever. But we all know what GDP kind of is. It's important. That's what we need to know. All right. Um, so that's down, like big time down, because who the hell's spending money to create more product or who's innovating in a high interest rate environment? I know as hell, I, I know, I sure as hell know we're not building homes. Single family housing permits through the floor. Who's building homes? It's too damn expensive. And we don't have enough trades people anyway. So why bother? Go golfing. It's the summer. So coming back to the unemployment numbers, it upticked, obviously, but got to dig into the numbers a little bit. It only upticked by like 0.1, so whatever, but you got to really look at the numbers, okay? So Canadian economy, I'm just reading off my screen so it's easier. Uh, Canadian economy added uh, a flat 27,000 jobs in May. Yep, that's pretty much flat, uh, but the, to break down the numbers, and I have just completely lost it. Uh, oh, here we go. So part-time employment was up 62,000. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm, I've lost it here. Oh, sorry. So uh, part-time employment was up 62,000. And full-time declined thir 36,000. 
So this is, this is, this is kind of scary. So part of the unemployment increase was the decrease in full-time employment, which is what we all want, a full-time job. But then you have this, this crazy doubling on part-time, roughly doubling. Uh, people in the comments love to point out all my little math mishaps, but a lot more than the full-time decline because yeah, it is more than double, isn't it? It's like three, three times plus two plus three, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's a hell of a lot more. Probably a combination of two things. People going to part-time jobs who might be working full-time, but they need the extra money, right? We know people are working second jobs just to make ends meet. That's part of the part-time job increase. The other part of the part-time job thing is more employers only taking on part-time. That A lot of that is happening. Why would you take on one full-time employee with benefits and everything else if you take on two part-timers who are hourly, right? There's, there, th that we see a lot of, and sometimes it's just involuntary. That's all there is that's out there, okay? So what does this mean for the economy? Well, it's a good sign for, it's a good contributor to a choice for Tiffy Boy to possibly drop rates in June or July, sorry, a little far out for that, but it, it's a contributory factor, right? Um, but other than that, the only thing this is probably going to hurt with, I mean, we added jobs, but you know, if people are only working part-time, they're working second jobs, that just shows that we're struggling a little bit more as an economy, right? We could see higher delinquencies, higher un unsecured debt, which is through the roof right now. So we could see that, okay? Delinquencies are up a little bit on mortgages, not crazy, but they're up a little bit. There's one chart I saw, um, I cannot quote the source, I just don't remember where it came from, but uh, write-offs are up as well on, on unsecured debt. Okay, so this is where write-offs are basically, lenders have given up trying to find the money and we just write it off. Okay. Um, so I've seen that as well, but this could be a contributory thing, right? Where if you're losing your full-time job and you're like part-time, what are you going to pay first, your mortgage or your credit card? Well, your freaking mortgage, right? So we're going to see higher delinquencies on loans and, and credit cards and less on mortgages because that is what people are going to pay first. So that is that. And then another little fun nugget of a stat Canadian, for better dwelling here, Canadian unemployment still climbing as popul oh, man, this rears its ugly head again. Population outpaces jobs by three. By three. We're still in that place. Right? Lost a lot, as I already said, we lost a lot of full time. Um, and just, we got more people immigrating here than we do jobs and housing and social programs, and healthcare. Do I need to keep going on? Okay. We did have, to change gears a little bit, we did have um, student, I talked about this on social media, and, and people, one guy quoted me, I was off by like 5,000 and whatever, but, you know, we had uh, student visas were through the roof January and February 2024. Uh, we got a cap on that this year. 360,000 student visas will be granted. Uh, 120, and this is where the guy like caught me on, uh, on social media. Cause I think the number was 133. I said 120, seriously, dude, whatever. Uh, but one third of that we have already seen in the two first two months of the year. Right now, some of it is hangover from already approved applications, November and December, and now they're being granted. But if we're up to 120,000 already or 130, whatever the number is, we're only allowing 360,000, roughly. Fact check me, go for it. Uh, does that mean we're shutting our doors in June if we're on the same pace? Or are we just going to slow it down? Um, I post. I don't think I posted on, on social media, but I did uh, uh, post on one of my presentations just recently to a realtor group. Uh, India, we are down year over year, 83% applications coming from India. Words on the street, man. Our, our country cannot support our current levels. Like we just can't. We just can't. That's all there is to it. We cannot support who we have living here right now and then further ex extreme immigration numbers. So I'm hoping JT, Disney Plus lady, and the rest of the 
circus up there uh, holds to their word so we can at least right the ship. I'm not saying we got to stop immigration. We got to slow it. Just get, let us breathe, man. Let us get caught up. We got to get caught up. And then we can ramp it up again once houses start coming back, building, housing starts getting built again, right? The Canadian dream, single family homes. Oh, man, lots of stuff. Lots of stuff there. Okay, uh, moving right along. That's the next thing I wanted to talk about here. Uh, I think there was one more thing that I can't really... Oh, this Oh, this is big. Oh, oh this is big. Okay, you ready for this? I, I think we'll, we'll end on this unless, uh, unless I can uh, come up with something else to talk to you guys about. So, uh, ADU. All right. Yeah. Additional dwelling units, uh, laneway homes. So the one strategy right now, and, and I'll talk about Ontario because I, I'm not fluent enough with the other provinces. I think it's the same thing, but we'll just talk about this for now in Ontario. So a big thing with more with investors is how do we increase our cash flow on our properties uh, at a relatively good price? to try to, uh, like I said, A, increase cash flow, and B, actually kind of help out and try to increase housing. And the government's got the same thought. Provincial government in Ontario definitely has the same thought. But the, here's what the challenge was. Because banks are always the last to adapt, or they're, it's the last thing they do, right? They, they always want to be last to the party on innovation, we'll say. The problem always has been, ADUs, additional dwelling units, laneway homes, second suites, whatever, um, are traditionally excluded from the value on an appraisal. This is a problem, right? If you're an investor and you drop, I'm going to make up some numbers here, you drop 100 grand on a new additional dwelling unit, but then you can't get your money back uh, by refinancing because the bank won't include the value of the ADU in the appraised value. Well, this is a problem. Why would you care? Who cares, right? Well, this is it. So we've had, and because our, our brokerage is, uh, does a great deal of volume, we, have, we now have two, not one, two lenders that will actually include the additional dwelling unit uh, or the laneway home or the second suite, whatever, in the appraised value. This is kind of epic because for a bank or two banks in our cases, in our case, to go and about face and, and say, hey, look, you know what, there's probably very little um, risk here. As long as it's legal, there's a couple of little um, a couple of little requirements, minimum square footage, stuff like that, that it has to meet. As long as it's legal and, and it makes sense, hey, yeah, we'll include it in the appraised value. But why wouldn't you? Like, why not? If it's all legal and it all makes sense, include it in the damn value. What's the problem? So Get at me, okay, if you have any questions on that, or you're thinking of doing it, or you want to do it, or uh, you want to know how it works, get at me. That's my shameless plug for this episode. All right, that's enough fun for today. Um, as you can see, I haven't shaved in like a week, because it has been that busy, right? I've made a very nice little home on my couch, because I keep falling asleep at 1 a.m., because it's been so damn busy. Uh, and this week is going to be no exception. So, all right, uh, my friends, any questions? Hey, you guys let me know. You know I'm always around for you. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments, as long as they're nice thoughts and comments. <laughs> and listen, like I said, look, I'm not an economist, man. I am a guy, all right, who does mortgages, who just kind of nerds out on data, tries to bring great information to people. Um, hey, fact check me in a really polite way. Don't be mean about it, but if I'm off on something or whatever, let me know. Like, I would love to hear. I love conversations on this stuff. All right. Anyway, you know the rules here. Like me, love me, follow me, desire me, want me, whatever. Five stars would be amazing. Because uh, I don't think it accepts four, three, two, or one. And how we always end all of our little calls here. Our, our little calls are my little, a little video thing. All right. Uh, keep fit. Have fun. Talk to you soon.